Before we get into that episode, guys, I want to uh, thank the sponsors of this podcast. I want to thank GoHunt.com Gear Shop, my friend Cody Nelson of 20 plus years. Uh, he is the optics manager there. Uh, you can call Cody directly for info and sales on any optics, binoculars, tripods, spotting scopes, anything to do with glassing. Reach out at 702-847-8747, that's extension 2, or email him directly at optics at gohunt.com. Uh, remember that uh, there is a July uh, promotional uh, drawing, and if you spend $12, you get 12 entries into this drawing. If you spend $2,000, you get $2,000 uh, entered into this drawing. So dollar for dollar entry. Uh, all you got to do is use the J. Scott 19 promo code when you either purchase something from the Go Hunt Gear Shop online uh, or when you call Cody, tell him you want to be in the drawing for the J. Scott uh, 19 drawing. And it's a $1,000 Go Hunt Gear Shop gift card. So for the month of July, there's a $1,000 gift card giveaway. All you have to do is purchase. Uh, to be entered into the drawing. I want to thank them for their sponsorship. I also want to remind you guys that the Go Hunt Insider, uh, there is a 30-day free trial going on right now. All you've got to do is go to www.gohunt.com forward slash J Scott, follow the prompts, and uh, you'll be able to uh, view and access the Insider. You'll be able to look at all of the draw odds for all the different states, all the different animals, and you'll be able to see what it's all about to be an insider member. It's a 30-day free trial. Go check it out. I also want to thank Kuyu, Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. Uh, that's the gear that I wear on all my hunts. You can find out more. Go to Kuyu. That's K-U-I-U dot com. Thanks to Kuyu for their sponsorship. Also, phonescope.com. Use the JScott19 promo code. You're going to get a 10% discount off all orders. That is the digiscoping device that I use on my iPhone uh, 10. And onxmaps.com. Go to onxmaps.com. Use the JScott19 promo code, and you're going to get a 20% discount on all orders. Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today we have Brendan Burns, the co-CEO of Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. Brendan, how are you doing? Doing well, Jay. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, I was excited the last time we talked to you, excited to get you on today. The last time we talked to you, had just uh, finished an archery brown bear hunt, uh, and you were going on and killed a big old bear and made an incredible video out of that, but... Uh, then you headed out on a grizzly bear hunt, archery grizzly bear, and that was successful. How was that hunt? Uh, it's, it's, it was great. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. The the, grizz, the brown bear hunt was the last spring, and then this spring was a, a grizzly hunt. Yeah, it was a great hunt with lance again. Um, was fortunate enough to arrow a great big bear. Um, Going to have another. It's got got it all on film. It's some really cool footage, and just a thrill to. I mean, hunt those big bears is something else. So it's really, really a great trip and. Boy, you know, I, I don't know if uh, it, it should be out sooner than the, the last brown bear. That one what was about a year, but it'll be out sooner. But it's been, uh, it was a really cool trip. They're, a, they're an incredible animal. It's a, it's a cool, it's a cool hunt. They're definitely different than brown bears. Um, they're, it's a little hungrier country. They're a little, they're a little meaner, um, but it was, yeah, it was really cool. So made a great shot and yeah, great big bear. So no complaints for me. Brendan, do you see hunting big bears, whether it be grizzly or brown, do you see that being something like something that's captured you like doll sheep hunting um, in that you want to do multiple hunts every year? I mean, do you see yourself going on more and more grizzly and bear hunts, or do you see it as, you know, okay, I've killed those two, and now I'm looking for something else? Where does that kind of fit in your own personal um, desire of wanting to hunt those? It's definitely jumped up. I, I've, I've on the uh, on the Olympic podium of stuff I like to hunt, we've got elk and sheep and uh, and big bears are on there now, and it's it's just one of those cool things where you know that to chase those big bears. I mean, it is the largest land predator on the planet. They're they are dangerous, um, and it's just it takes a mentality and it takes a, a focus that is different and unique than anything else you hunt, um, even black bears. You know, like it's just different, and I really enjoy that. Um, I don't know if it's the pressure, if it's the, um, 
the, the ability to control your emotions or, and, and make a good shot. Like I, especially with a bow, I, I just love the, I don't know, being yeah, in it. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to describe unless you've done it. But there's uh, there's some moments involved that are that are just different than anything else. And uh, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, anything you can do in Alaska. I love to do, and they're just such an impressive animal. They need to be managed for sure. Um, I'm a big advocate for hunting any predator and every predator. Um, so yeah, I mean, I like to. I, I really enjoy it. It's not a collection thing for me. I mean, I have no idea what I'll do with either of those bears. But uh, I can definitely see it working in the rotation, so I'm going to do uh, as often as I can. I definitely not want to check off the list that I've got it done and don't need to do that again. I'm, I need to do it more. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. What was the biggest thing that you noticed, you know, about brown bear versus grizzly bear as far as the actual animal themselves, um, you know, whether it be the terrain, whether it be the, you know, the way they act, the way they look, um, you know, what kind of jumped out at you between the two? Well, each, each bear is obviously different, but I'll say, um, you know, there's more food in brown bear country. They have, you know, they're they're wandering around. They've got, you know, whether it's the ocean and, and there's probably more food in that country. But I'll say, and again, I don't have the most experience as, as far as hunting great big bears, but um, the reaction of the brown bear was what just happened, and he was, you know, wanting to see what happened. The reaction of the grizzly bear was, where are you? Like, he came unglued. And they're he was looking they're pretty, for for you. Yeah, it's part of it's the time of year. You know, they're they're running, they're looking for sows. So I don't know if he, they thought, you know, I bumped into a another boar or what. You know, it's hard to say. And again, it's you know, each individual bear is going to be different. But they're it's hungrier country. They're definitely. Um, I don't think they eat as often. I think they're. Uh, I think interactions with people are far fewer and further between. And they're yeah, there's definitely a different reaction. But they're just. Uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a really, really, it's really pushing your, yeah, it, it's hard to describe. I you know, I hope everybody gets a chance to at least be in the presence of them or, or go and, and do one of those hunts because it's, uh, yeah, it's a really, it's a cool experience. Yeah, and when you're hunting them, when they're chasing south, in other words, they're at their peak of heightened awareness as far as, you know, they're, they're looking for sows to, to mate, but they're also probably having some heavy fights with other boars and what have you. So if you bump them or you, you know, you make a bad shot, they're on the fight. I mean, like they're, they're, they're at maximum capacity of wanting to get her done. Right. Yeah, they do. They do a lot of fighting. My bear has a giant, two giant teeth marks in the front of his muzzle where I don't know if a sow bit him or he got in a fight with somebody, but two giant, giant bite marks. And obviously you saw what my brown bear looked like. I mean, he was missing an ear and giant scars all over. He'd been in a few scrapes. So, um, yeah, they're, they, they're definitely, you know, like I said, they're, they're not fight or flight. Uh, they're generally fight. I mean, they're, 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 they, they turn, when they get spooked, they generally will turn in. So, so yeah, it's a really cool, just a, and it's a neat, you know, it's just neat country. It's really, that was different than the peninsula. You know, it's really, you know, quite a bit of timber, big open tundra stuff, a lot of glassing, um, just a, just a really cool animal, really cool area. You know, I, I just, I love Alaska. That's, I don't even know how much time I've spent out there, but but a significant portion the last 20 years, and I love it every time I go back. So yeah, it's a, it's really cool. I know my friend uh, Bob Griego, Dr. Griego. He uh, I think flew in right after you and hunted with Lance, and he also he shot a giant bear as well, and he was just ecstatic uh, about his trip. His bear is his bear is an all time mega giant. Yeah, Bob killed a bear that's uh, 26 and six or nine or something like one, I think it'll be number two all time. He's a tremendous bear, just a huge old giant boar. And yeah, he, uh, gosh, I got to see the footage of him killing that. It's a, it's a giant bear. So that was really cool. Yeah. They're there. I mean, anybody that does it there, that's the real deal. Yep. Brendan, I know you're leaving here in a couple of days. Uh, you're starting your, uh, summer 2019 season, uh, with your sheep hunts. You're starting your sheep season. Uh, tell us what you've got going uh, on the on the time horizon here over the next month or two, and then uh, let's talk about this first hunt that you're going on here in a few days. Yeah, I leave Friday for uh, it's called Canal Outfitters. Uh, it's a doll sheep hunt in the Northwest Territories. It formerly was an area called Ramhead, um, and it's uh, yeah one of the best areas in the NWT. And this is a uh, this is a hunt that I personally booked. 
I try to book a sheep hunt every three years personally, not, not stuff we do for work. Or um, So this is one I booked a couple years ago, and I'm really excited about this archery hunt, um, not taking a rifle. Um, and I, fly, I drive out on, on Friday. I'm driving to Edmonton, um, kind of a tip for anybody that lives anywhere close to the border. Getting to the Northwest Territories is basically like a two-and-a-half-day event, so I can cut a basically a day off of travel with eight hours of uh, driving. So I drive to Edmonton and then fly out, and then I can bring my stuff back with me. But, yeah, it's a getting dropped off with a helicopter and then a 10-day backpack hunt. And, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. My, my buddy Johnny Nykirk is coming with me, and then uh, Paul and Matt will be along as well. And, yeah, it should be uh, it's fun to hunt them in July, you know, 18, 18 plus hours of daylight, you know, I'm not gonna, not gonna be any shortage of uh, time for stocks and, and moving. So, um, obviously, you've been up there a little later a year ago, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. It's the first time I've hunted in July and in the NWT, and I, I kind of got a goal of, uh, you know, hunting every area in the NWT before she's all done. So this is knocking another one off the list, and I'm, I'm pretty excited for this hunt. Great. So you'll go from Edmonton and then um, to Yellowknife, and then and then on in uh, from there. Talk about the journey a little bit. Yeah, I think I think we fly into Norman Wells. Um, I think you yeah. went to Norm, Yellowknife. We're going into Norman Wells and getting picked up from there. So yeah, I'll get I'll get to Edmonton Friday night, um, and then fly to Norman Wells on Saturday morning, and then I think we're going straight out after that. Sheep season opens the fifteenth of July. Um, and I, yeah, actually, I think it's like midnight of July 14th. I think it ticks over the 15th. So yeah, early yeah. morning of the 15th, we'll be out. And yeah, it's going to be a really cool hunt. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm I got pretty cool setup. I'm taking on this hunt. I'm, I'm going as light as I've ever gone. Obviously, it's July 15th, so I'm uh, I've just taken everything down to as low as I can go. Only taking a bow. Um, yeah, it's going to be a going to be a cool trip so and then i uh i get back for 10 days and then i go to alaska to ultimately for a for a rifle doll hunt and so doing back to back which is uh first i've, I've done it before in 2015 but it's uh yeah looking forward to two in a row it's uh not it, it'd be nice if you could space them out a little bit but the uh the timing of these two and when they were booked just uh came up that um, we're gonna have to do them back to back, not have to. So definitely not. <laughs> Don't yeah, make it I don't think she's something I have it. to do. But <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice when you get space them out. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. That's kind of the opposite hunt of the of the NWT hunt. That's a it's a glacier hunt. It's a rifle hunt. Um, real like in the NWT, we're in the Mackenzie Mountains. We're gonna be moving some huge country. Um, really, there's nothing to stop you from moving from one area to the other. If you can get your eyes on around, you can move there. Whereas the glacier hunt is going to be kind of getting dropped off on a glacier with skis on a plane, and then uh, and then probably not moving that far. Some glacier country, really inhospitable stuff, mountaineering type stuff, and um, so it'll be just like two of the opposite hunts back to back, which will be really really cool. I've hunted a glacier before in 2014, Jason Harrison and I did, and it was uh, it was one of my favorite hunts ever. So I'm looking, looking forward to both. When you have an archery hunt right here in front of you, do you have a little different mindset, archery, doll sheep hunting, as opposed to rifle, uh, doll sheep hunting? And if so, what is that mindset, you know? Yeah, I think it varies. I mean, I would say my, um, this one, I'm not taking a rifle. I needed, I, I've struggled with doll sheep. I mean, doll sheep has been my nemesis. Um, so I've got 50 plus days bow hunting doll sheep, and I've had one opportunity and and, and didn't t- didn't get around. So um, I had one shot and didn't didn't make the shot. So um, this one is uh, I just focused a lot on this trip of just you know shooting, making sure I'm shooting well, and, uh, and I'm not taking a rifle. So uh, I think the best way to kill a sheep is to not take a rifle and not even give that option. Um, and so we're, uh, we'll see how it goes. And uh, it's, it's a little different spot. I've killed four doll sheep now. and I don't need to kill another one. I want to kill another one. Um, so I'm just really looking forward to the trip, looking forward to spending the whole time out there. And, you know, if I can control as much as I can control, then uh, it's going to work out how it's going to work out. I'm comfortable either way. So I'm, I'm, uh, it's going to be a good time. I know we've got a bunch of uh, questions from Kuyu customers here that we're going to go through uh, that I've got to ask you, uh, but I've got a question before we get into that. You're talk, uh, taking your bow 
on this first hunt. Um, can you talk a little bit about your archery setup? I know we've had questions before. Does your archery setup change between bear hunting, sheep hunting, elk hunting? Um, I know you've answered that, but, uh, you know, answer it again and tell us a little bit about, you know, the bow, your equipment, and what have you. It does change. Um, <clears throat> like I've, I've said a couple times in the past, elk and big bears have a different setup for me. Like I shoot a, a pretty heavy arrow that's um, about as, you know, that's got a lot of kinetic energy. Um, I shoot a fixed blade broadhead for bears and elk. Um, for my archery setup is, you know, doll sheep, sheep in particular are not the most durable animal. They're not the biggest animal. They're, um, in reality, I just need to make a really good shot. And distances could be a little longer than I would be comfortable shooting at elk or, or bear. So I'm shooting a, uh, I'm taking a, um, my, um, my carbon defiant on this one uh, that I killed my stone sheep with. I'm taking a bow that I've had set up for sheep. Um, I'm shooting a 395 grain arrow. I'm shooting a expandable broadhead on this one, not a, not a fixed, uh, fixed blade. Um, I'm shooting about 295 feet a second. Uh, I've got a multiple pin, a multi-pin that can switch to a single pin slider um, for this one. And I just, I've got my bow just really set up to be super durable. Everything is removable on the bow. So when I'm moving country, I take, I kind of take my bow apart. I, I pull my side, I pull my arrows off there. Um, just make sure that if I was going to fall down or get caught up in brush or something, I don't rip anything off. But I'm, uh, it's kind of my backpack sheep bow, um, same thing I use for antelope and stuff like that. So I just go with a little lighter setup um, just based on probably slightly longer shots potentially and um, it's just a bow. I, I actually kind of have some, uh, just I have a personal connection with this bow. I just, uh, I've, I've got a, I just shot the grizzly bear with the RX-3, the new RX-3 Ultra. I really love that bow. That's my, my elk and, and bear bow now. But um, this bow I killed a stone sheep with, and it just always shot really well for me, so I'm, I'm taking this one um, on this hunt. So, um, yeah, like I said, I do have two different setups. Um, and like I said, the, the for elk and the big bears, they just, they're hard to kill, and so I just have a, a different setup for them. Right on. Let's dive into some of these questions from, to you customers, I put it out on my Instagram page, and we got uh, a bunch of questions here, and I think it'll be, as always, when we do these question and answer sessions with you, Brennan, the uh, QU customers get a lot of uh, value out of it, so let's just dive in. Uh, first question, uh, would Brendan be able to share his gear list for early, mid-August doll sheep hunt? <clears throat> No problem. Um, and if anybody wants to email me or email in at customer service at com or email me brennanb at com, I can send you my actual gear list. I don't know if you want to go through the entire gear list or well, some of this stuff's going to depend on um, early August, early mid August doll sheep hunt would be, you know, where are you going? Is it a full backpack hunt? Are you out of a base camp? A uh, helicopter hunter is a horseback hunt? Are you going to Alaska? Um, is this a Brooks Range hunt? Are you in NWT? Are you in the Yukon? I mean, some of this will depend on where you're going, who you're going with, how they hunt. Um, and and but, just to be clear with that, Brendan, what you're saying is if people want to email you directly or email in at customer service, you're happy to communicate with them and help them kind of customize because it's, it's, it's not as easy as just saying, here's the list, go get it. You're saying conditions, all types of variables could change depending on, you know, what you have going on, whether it's July, whether it's August, whether it's, you know, early yeah. September, when it is, um, but you're willing to kind of help people customize their list, right? Yeah, customer service has my personal sheep gear lists <coughs> like this. And then, uh, yeah, there is no magic bullet. I mean, we get it all the time where people are like, you know, hey, what's your best jacket? It depends on your exertion level, it depends on how you run personally. Like some guys run really hot, some guys run cool. Um, some guys are huge sweaters. You know, that it depends on whether you're going to take synthetic or, or merino. I mean, some guys are just prolific sweaters where, you know, their merino is generally soaked all the time because, it, it, you know, you need something that dries a little faster. I prefer merino. I'm not a huge sweater. So it just depends on your, you know, that, that's where experience and just, just taking and using um, the gear um will will allow you to pick what's best for you. I mean, my gear list um, is only is is only 
shows what is really what I like to do. I mean, for example, like when you went up, I heard you almost starved to death on my food list last year. <laughs> and in, in the two guys, Lance was like, who gave Jay that list? I was like, well, I told everybody, like, I, I'm a 165-pound former college wrestler. I don't eat that much. Yeah. If you take my exact year list. The fat got to eat, Brendan. The yeah, if you eat. take my exact food list and haven't <laughs> operated on it for a couple of days and know how your body reacts to it, you may starve to death. If you weigh 270 pounds and take my food <laughs> list on a backpack hunt, you might die. <laughs> so it really depends on it depends on how you yeah. operate. Like I know this stuff works for me, and and really when we talk gear list, it's it's just hopefully allowing someone who's going on a list to, to pick what they feel is going to be best for them. And, and, and the only way you really know is by using it. So um, I, I'll just give you a few, you know, obviously yep. we make a bunch of different stuff. But like, for example, in the Northwest Territories, I'm, I'm headed on this hunt. I've got two back-to-back. -back. I'll tell you some of the differences. On the first hunt, I'm taking the Chugach rain gear. The reason I'm taking the Chugach is it's a little bit quieter. It's earlier season. It's a little bit lighter. Um, it's a bow hunt, so obviously it's a little quieter. If I get stuck in the rain and I'm stalking a sheep, I want the quietest rain gear I've got. It's got it's it's a little lighter to pack. I'm not ex anticipating horrible weather, and I've looked at the long term forecast now. I mean, it looks like 45 low, 75 high, which is pretty hot. So my entire list that I built on this one, I, I'm not taking a soft shell jacket. I'm not taking a. I'm taking one insulation jacket. I'm taking a 3D FX, our new Katana um, hybrid jacket, um, one 240 Peloton. Uh, a couple base layers and and ultra down and an ultra down pant because um, I'm trying to go as light as possible. So as opposed to the glacier hunt coming right after that, where I will take um, <clears throat> I haven't decided yet, but either the Katana or the Yukon on that one because it's going to be really rough country, not a lot of um, it's just going to be really tough, lots of rock. We're going to be wearing crampons, crossing some glaciers, so you want something that's the most durable that you may be living in, the notoriously bad weather. So <clears throat> that's just one thing, and, and, and w one of the reasons is, you know, both these hunts are unsupported, meaning when you get dropped off, that's it. Nobody's coming for you. Nobody's, you're not going to walk, you can't walk back to base camp. Both of them are when you get dropped off, you're there until somebody, I mean, you can get out. It's it's an emergency evacuation or, or you pull the hunt or whatever it is, but these are the kind of hunts where you have to have everything that you possibly need on them. Well, some hunts aren't like that. Some you're based out of a base camp, and you're going to, you know, ride up into a valley with horses and spend three days up there. Well, that's a different list than you would take on an unsupported hunt. Or you're walking in um, from the road somewhere, um, whether it's a lower 48 hunt or something like that. Well, then, oh, that's a different thing. If things go bad, you can just walk out. So, um, again, I do want to send in. I will, and we have a, I actually just shot a full pack um, breakdown of everything I'm taking on this first hunt. I will shoot one in the field up there and then, uh, and then on this second hunt too, so that'll, that'll be available on, online here shortly. Good. Good stuff. Um, and, and to further that, your, this question is asking for a mid-August dull sheep hunt. Um, it, it's totally different than this first hunt you're going on in July where the temperatures could be 75 degrees. I saw the same thing when I went to the NWT and then went to the Chugach in Alaska. I mean, Chugach was freezing cold pretty much the entire time. Uh, you know, snow, sleet, glaciers, you know, the, the whole nine yards. And, you know, they're only 30 days apart, but it's totally, it you know, weather is completely different depending on, you know, weather patterns, but also geographic locations, even though yep. the time frame isn't that much different. Yeah, there's a class example of unsupported versus, you know, like when you're in the Chugach, it's a walk-in area only. There is no flying in. Right. So if right. you need to walk out, you walked in, you can leave. Um, it's, right. <laughs> it's pretty much the end of your hunt if you do, but um, that's a walk-in area, um, as opposed to in, when you got dropped off by a cub up at Arctic Red. You're unsupported. You're dropped off. Um, they may fly over and give you a food drop, but you're basically there. So that's you know that plays into into how it is. You know what you would pack, um, how much you'd need. And again, you're talking weather. I mean, one of the one of the things you get asked a lot is you know what should I take here or there? And like you definitely watch the weather. Like right now, I'm watching the weather. I'm planning on taking a katana pan, um, but I may take a timber on. If I get up there and it looks like ten days, no rain, and average of 70 degrees, I'm probably going to take a Tiburon pant with a uh, full zip long underwear underneath because it's, it, it's going to be hot the whole time. So those are the kind of things that you just, you know, experience and just watching what 
what you're going to encounter, or and, and a lot of it too. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're these are fully guided hunts, so listen to your guide. They'll tell you, like, hey, it, it looks like it's going to be nice, but you can't bank on that. So, um, yeah, listen to who you're going with, and as far as the stuff that you're going to need. And that that being said, also, Brendan, you bring up a point. Um, when you're going on these trips, your your bag that you bring has a couple of variables in case you land and, you know, you make the last-minute decision to go Tiburon instead of Kutana. Like, you bring a couple of, uh, of variables where if something changes, you land, and they say, man, you know, last 24 hours things have changed, it's going to be nastier. Then you, then you kind of make an adjustment, right? And would you yep. recommend that to people? Because uh, I know so many people are weight-conscious about, you know, extra bag keys and blah, blah, blah. But on a big trip like this, I was the one that was thinking, I'm going to bring extra, and I'm going to make a game-time decision when I get there on a few of these things. And I think that, you know, regardless, you know, the extra 50 bucks or 75 bucks for an extra bag, to me, is well worth it if you get there and things have changed. Yeah, I think everything, I mean, like I said, that's part of control and everything that you can control. And I want to have as many options, you know, and you can overpack. I mean, you, you can definitely overpack, but I like to have just a couple of options, especially, and, and really that kind of comes into play with, like, the situation I'm dealing with right now. If it's going to be a scorcher, like crazy hot, well, then, you know, you want to have your, your down with you and all the stuff you need in case it gets cold or you get, you know, wet or something like that. But at the end of the day, if it's going to be 75 the whole time, um, I know what that looks like sheep hunting, and it's uh, it's. I, I'm going to take the lightest stuff possible. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely, you, you want to have the option to change some stuff out or, um, yeah, just make it, like you said, game time. If it looks like it's going to rain for 10 days straight, they want to throw in an extra uh, mid-layer and base layer because, you know, you're probably going to end up maybe wet or, you know, hanging out in the rain. You know, like you, you, you want to be the most comfortable you can be, and that's, that's a decision you make at the time too. Next question, any tips for stocks in open alpine terrain? How about a story of a stock like that? Uh, tips on stock in open alpine terrain, I, I mean, I assume they're talking about sheep. Um, I never stock a ram ever in its first bed of the day, one of the in the wide open. I mean, sheep will generally kick out of bed, lay down, and if you watch them for a little while, they're going to eventually move again. Once they... Once they stand up and move to their second bed and go down, I, I would say 95% of the time they're going to be there. That's where they're going to spend the day. Um, I've seen a lot of guys take off, especially guiding. Where I learned it the hard way a long time that, um, you know, that first bed, they're not necessarily going to be there. They're going to let the sun get up and make sure that they're fully covered from the sun, and then they'll move to their second bed. So that's one thing. And then really just, you know, watching the wind and keeping your eye on the animal. I mean, I, I got away with a, this brown, this grizzly bear that I just arrowed. You know, it was in the wide open, not one piece of cover whatsoever. But if you keep your eye on the animal, and th there is times when you can move as long as they're not looking at you, and it, it seems like a simple thing to, to think, but you, you don't really have to plan a stock, and you can move in, in the wide open if you, if you, you know, watch their posture and where they're, what they're looking at, and conversely, if they're just standing, if they're just laying there or standing there and they're looking head up, I wouldn't move. I mean, you, you're not going to get away with anything. Let's see. Does Brendan bring a pack? For, let's see. Does Brendan bring a day pack for a seven to ten day backpack hunt? What goes in it? Seven to ten days would be our like a seventy eight hundred pro, which I'm taking on both these hunts. Um, that's you know seven to ten days. You're, that's that's what I consider. You know you, you're going to be packing all your food. You're going to be packing you know probably your cooking items. Um, your shelter, sleep system, weapon, glass, everything. I mean, I, I, and, and, and you got to plan for hiking out, plan for being successful. Um, so coming out with a sheep, so that would be the, the largest one, the 7,800. Now, a lot of times when I'm bow hunting, if it's out of a main camp or we're in a place for a couple of days hunting one small, you know, mountain block or something and we're going to be in one spot, um, I'd take a 6,000. If you know you're, you know, you're going to be at most three to four days out, then um, I, I, I prefer to hunt with a, I, 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 I like to hunt with as small a pack as you can, um, as you can get away with, um, or, or I guess as much as you need. So, but uh, for these type of hunts, 10 days, you're talking 7,800, big, big as you can go. 
Brendan, I just got the new pack with the new Pro Suspension. Um, man, the lumbar pad, it, there's so many great adjustments that you guys made on this. Talk a little bit about uh, the new packs. So our new Pro Suspension and Pro Bags we just came out with. Um, and yeah, we, we really took a different approach in that we, we you know, some of the we, we wanted to make sure it fit everybody, and, and we, we really looked at it as like, what's going to make this the most adjustable, the most comfortable, um, and give people the most options. We really focused on the modular pack system as far as, you know, like I said, being able to take a one perfectly fitted suspension and frame that fits you like a glove every time, and, and the ability to change out your bags quickly, like on our system now, it's, it's Ten clips takes me two minutes. I mean, I actually have all my bags set up now. It's it's always been a pain to change out bags and you know have have other setups. But but in reality, if you have one perfectly fitted frame and suspension, and it's easy to change out the bags, which it is. I mean, I just did it yesterday and was showing the um, guy in a minute and forty five seconds with the full pack. Um, it gives you the ability to take the perfect pack every time you go. And and our new system just gives you more adjustment for what. Um, for different builds, for your your personal preference. I mean, there's a lot of good packs out there. Um, we feel like we've we've really nailed the, the modularity and the fit of this one. Um, and it's we've done it as an upgrade, so it'll fit on everything that we've come out with since 2014. Same frame, and then there's a conversion kit, which is pretty simple, or everything everything since 2017. And it, it's um, fully compatible. Just Clips right over. So, um, yeah, again, just just giving people the most options um, with one suspension and frame, and then you know all the different bags. I mean, I think we have ten different options at this point in time, including a load sling, so that you know, you know, if you're doing a half day hunt, dropping a few cameras off, all the way to a fifteen day unsupported backpack hunt, you 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 got your one frame and suspension that fits you perfectly, and then uh, make a choice on your bag before you go. Did you yourself? You know, personally, uh, have issues with the older suspension system uh, and and weight uh, carrying capability, uh, and, and decide that you know you wanted to to make sure you guys fit that niche of being able to carry heavy weight and still have you know the lightest packs on the market, um, or was it from you know customer and guide feedback as well? Yeah, it's from a lot of feedback and and a lot of stuff where uh, I, I personally have hunted with our system since 2011. With you know, but it, it fits me very well. Some of the times you look at stuff, um, you kind of have to step out of of yourself and, and be a little more objective and go like, okay, to some people like, what what don't you like? What's not fitting you good? How can we fix that? And and that's what we really did with this one. And then we just added some options. I mean, when you look, talk about like our Apex shoulder straps, I mean, they're three times the foam. Um, three times the cushion. I mean, when you're packing really heavy weight, which I'll be using on, on these trips where I'm planning on coming out loaded, um, it's really nice to have a super comfortable, cushy um, shoulder strap. And, and sometimes when you're going super light and you're not carrying that big of a pack, you can just swap it out and have a regular shoulder strap. So it just it just gives you the options to make it custom fitted for you. I mean, the, the perfect there's no perfect pack. The perfect pack is the one that's custom built to you, and, and that's what we've really focused on. Yeah, I think you guys did a really good job. I think the waist belt too um, has a, a way better feel. I think the mesh, um, it, it's just got a, it's just I like it. I've I've really been enjoying it here the last couple weeks uh, since I got it. I haven't uh, hunted with it yet, but um, hiking around here in Colorado, it's it's been a great uh, you know change and and I think an upgrade from the previous pack. And the the thing that I really like too is the fact that. You know, people that already have the frame, um, you know, it, it's compatible. So you didn't make it where people, you know, would have to go buy a whole new system. You made it where it would work with people's frames that they already have. Yep. Yeah, that was that was the goal, and while not compromising, um, fixing or making it more modular. So we're uh, we're real happy how it came out. With um, yeah. Next question is, please give a review of the rifle you're taking on your sheep hunt, Brendan. Well, we just went over the bow on the first one. This, the second hunt is a rifle hunt, and I'm taking, I haven't decided yet. I'm either taking a uh, 7LRM or a 65284. Um, I'm not an absolute rifle expert by any means. My goal with sheep hunting has always been, and as, as you know, Jay, 
you know, a thousand yard gun doesn't do you that much good on a doll sheep hunt. I mean, you have, you have wound fees. Um, really, you, you got to get in and count rings. I'm, I'm hunting old rams. You, you know, at, at the you know, like the long range thing doesn't really apply to sheep as far as I'm concerned. So my my goal has always been to, uh, to have a six pound, six hundred yard gun. And so my uh, I've got a six five three eighty four, which is a great caliber, one hundred forty grain bullet, and a uh, seven LRM, which is a it's a slightly heavier. That's uh, that shoots a hundred eighty grain hybrid, and both are really effective. I haven't decided which one I'm taking yet. Probably uh, probably the six five two eighty four, but uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, the best rifle to take is the one that you shoot the best. Um, I've guided a lot of hunters. You know, a brand new gun that you don't know that well is a recipe for disaster, no matter how accurate it is. And good solid thirty out six that you shoot like crazy is is, is just as good um, as anything. So. That's that's kind of my take on the rifle situation. Next question. It's, I mean, it's pr pretty much the same. What is your preferred caliber for sheep? And then it says thoughts on one inch versus thirty millimeter scope uh, tube for weight? Question mark. So the scope thing. Um, I use the lightest scope possible. Like on my sheep rifle, I've got a uh, four to fourteen loophole with a low turret. Um, I believe it's a one inch tube. Um, and, and again, everything I focus on when it comes to a rifle is um, cut and weight. Uh, I mean, it's a paperweight till I need it. Uh, it needs to be very effective, uh, but it's a paperweight till I need it. So I'm on a, um, I don't know that you'd see the the performance in a one inch versus thirty millimeter um, tube as far as even for light gathering, um, maybe a little bit. But I'll, I don't know that you'd notice that if I think my scope is the four to fourteen. It's like a little over a pound, which is why I picked it. Okay, is the Ultra NX rain gear pant enough for a late September? BC goat hunt or go heavier? We don't make the the ultra NX anymore. Um, it, it definitely would be too light for that kind of hunt. I would not recommend the the ultra was uh, was really a minimalist kind of emergency incidental type rain gear as light as possible. I think it was five ounces for the jacket and five ounces for the pant or something like that. It was insanely light. So for for BC goat hunt, I would go with the katana or the Yukon. Um, it depends. Late September can be, you know, up north can be, that can be full-on winter. So I um, may even lean towards the Yukon jacket because um, the, the Yukon is really kind of a dual-purpose rain jacket. You can wear it as a regular jacket and, and as, your, uh, as your rain jacket, um, which kind of eliminates one of your, like whether it's a soft shell. Um, so you can kind of eliminate one, especially if you're running like the, the, a really nice system that time of year is the Super Down Pro and the Yukon jacket and uh, uh, Yukon pan and Superdome Pro pan, and you're about as warm as you can get and protected. So that's, I'd, I'd say, or, or the Katana, if you're, if you're going on a backpack on looking to cut a little weight, uh, the Katana is going to be a little more durable than the Chugach. It falls in between the, 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 the Chugach and the Yukon, and, uh, but yeah, either the Katana or the Yukon. Peloton 97 Zip T hoodie solids back in stock before August, question mark. I believe those are estimated to be in around mid-August, but um, hopefully it'll be sooner, but coming shortly. Um, any thoughts? On, uh, by the way, I want to add something there. Um, the, the new 145 Merino Zip T hoodies, um, phenomenal. I'm glad you guys came out with that, uh, added the hoodie to that line. It's not the 97 Peloton, obviously, but uh, I've been wearing them. I can't wait wait to wear them hunting season, but I've been wearing them fishing a lot too and hiking. And uh, you know, you get up on some of these peaks in Colorado, and the wind's blowing. Uh, you want to take a little break when you get to the top. You just pop the hood up. It uh, gives good sun protection. So I'm, I'm that's a. I don't know if we have. I got to go through it and see if we have any questions on that. But I wanted to add the 145 hoodie is is a good addition. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Grizzly hunt quite a bit, and it uh, it was it was nice to keep the bugs off me. I, I I don't I like having a hood, but I I don't think I've ever worn a hood as much as I did on this last hunt because of the bugs. Uh, they were absolutely horrific. <laughs> yeah. Any thoughts on developing down over boots? Yeah, I'm working on something that I think would be better than that. Um, it's still in development, and uh, yeah, definitely, definitely something we're we're looking at. But uh, nothing, I don't have a timing or anything on it right now. Uh, Brendan, how do you keep your feet warm in super cold glassing sessions? 
Uh, one is picking the right boot, obviously, for, for the time of year, um, whether it's a, a, a late season fully insulated boot or early season, um, like with the Rebel K. But um, I, my sock system that I use is uh, I use a thin liner. I always wear two socks when I'm hunting, period. Like I use a thin liner sock and, a, and our heavier uh, New Yarn stock over the top, and I've, I've just have not dealt with any blisters. And I, I think a lot of people have boots that fit too tight, um, like like a really custom, like really, really a little bit tighter fit. I, I generally run a half size bigger, especially on a backpack hunt, you know, your feet swell. And, and the more room you have, again, the less you sweat, and the more room you have, as long as it's comfortable and your stuff's not sliding around, you know, as long as your boot will hold in, you know, in your heel, um, I prefer to have a little more room in my toes, which obviously will keep you a little bit warmer. Um, but a lot of it is just picking the right boot. Um, yeah. You, it says, you all are the best, <laughs> exclamation point. So that's cool. Uh, any advice for first-time backpack hunts? Um, you know, get out and do it. Um, there's, there's. Uh, the best advice I would say is just get out there and do it. Whether you know, it takes it takes a little while to get comfortable. You don't want to plan something and then you know have your whole thing planned around the first time you do anything. You know, go on something easy first. You know, like even if it's going down to the park and spending one night at sleeping in a tent. You know, it seems like a simple thing, but a lot of guys haven't spent a night out in the woods or go in somewhere. You know, go a couple hundred yards in or go somewhere in glass and sit sit out all night and. Um, and start backpacking. I mean, the, we can talk about building systems and what gear works best and what we suggest or anything like that. But really, it's uh, it's getting out there and, and and having the ability to build your own system. What works best for you? Um, best piece of advice I can give you is that most really great packing jobs on a backpack kind of ruined in the last ten minutes. Um, get a scale <laughs> and don't throw anything at the end that you think you might need. I mean, I, my, my pack for this, this sheep hunt that I'm going on is done right now. I haven't done my food, but my pack is done. I literally, it would take something incredible for me to put something in my, in my bag. It's all zipped up. It's ready to go in my truck right now, and I'm two days away. Like, most of the time, the stuff that you la add at the last minute, you don't really need. Um, so I just, that, that's just a rule of thumb that nothing goes in my pack unless I've, I've looked at it for a long time. And, and yeah, I get a scale and, get out and do it yeah and i think you bring up a good point there brennan i think a, a little introductory could be doing some of these scouting missions and such where you're you know hiking up uh, a midday uh you're getting to your glassing point uh, where you want to check some things out you know do some glassing uh you know set up your camp uh you know your tent and what have you and you know kind of see how it goes overnight make your backpacking you know your, your food and kind of just go through it and then get up the next morning and see, you know, see, you know, the dew on the tent and this and that and, you know, how you do everything and then do a little glassing and then pack everything back up and, and hike out. And you do that a few times throughout the summer, uh, you know, whether it be one night, two nights, however, whatever it may be, I feel like when you, you hit the ground running, then when the hunt starts, um, you know, you've done it. You, you're kind of comfortable with, you know, the way you're packing. Everything goes in the pack. You have a system. It's just, it's just, you know, your advice of just doing it. That's like, it sounds elementary, but it, it, it's exactly what it is. Uh, until you kind of go through the steps a few times, it seems um, daunting and you know somewhat ominous. But once you do it a few times, it's it seems very, very, very easy. Yeah, and you start to see what you. I mean, at, at the end of the day, a lot of it is just knowing what you don't need. There's a lot of stuff you just don't need. I mean, there's lots of things that are nice to have. Um, I mean, when I was younger, I carried around a saw forever. And, and it's like I, I started looking at it, and after carrying this damn thing around for 10 years, I realized, like, I, I rarely ever use a saw. Unless I actually need a saw, like, I don't need to have a one-pound saw in my pack. Like, just don't. So um, I think it's just really a sorting out what you don't need either and, and, and yeah, just getting, getting comfortable with what you really need. And especially with the food, I tell people all the time, you, you know, I'll send you my food list, but make, like, do it for a couple days. Like, know if you yeah. can operate on, you know, like, you know, get the mountain house that you like or whatever, the you know, freeze dried you like and actually eat one for dinner. Um, I have seen guys in camp have some horrific reactions to 
Mountain House or or Shell Shots. I mean, I, I guided a client who had a very very unpleasant couple of days from drink, eating too many Gel Shots, and he just never operated on them and thought, well, I'm going to skip food and hammer out some Gel Shots, and that did not work out well for him. So, just just get on and 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 getting comfortable and getting your body accustomed to those kind of things. Um, and again, it, it allows you to develop your own system where you become an expert on what works for you. Yeah, good advice. Okay, uh, will the Merino boxers be coming back or will the Peloton 118 be the only option? We've actually never made Merino boxers, um, but we're working on a few things right now, nothing I can really report that we're, we, we feel like we can build better than um, – than is out there, but we're uh, we're working on some things right now. But the the 118 is a is a really quick drying brief, and uh, we're pretty happy with that. It was an upgrade from the 130, um, dries faster, um, more stretch, just a, just a really nice nice piece. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the merino merino boxers. Uh, you guys have never made those, but that's uh, they hold moisture. Uh, to put it mildly, right, Brendan, and that yeah, creates the yeah, issues. I, I think it's probably a uh, it, it's probably a, a blend or a uh, uh, yeah. It, it definitely I have never truly loved pure merino boxers um, for that reason, especially on a backpack. On they they start to stretch out a lot, and um, yeah. All right, most memorable or rewarding sheep hunt you have been on? Um, for me personally, um, I. Bighorn and the Bob Marshall in 2015, probably the greatest hunt I will ever. Just you know, thinking about it for 30 years and having it go down, find the sheep that I was actually after, and kill a great big ram, and do it with my bow, and um, great weather, and not running any grizzly bears, and uh, just a ton of adversity, lots of sheep. It was just like, yeah, I, I doubt I'll ever surpass that. I've had some. They're all they're all great. I mean, they're they're all memorable. They all have something you look back on and go. Wow, that's that was that was amazing. I mean, my, my dad killed a, a ram in two thousand one. Was really the first sheep I was on, and that one, you know, was was kind of one that started it all. And you know, down the road, I'm really looking forward to Lucas getting his first ram. So um, they're all they're all great. Uh, how is the all around horn growth this year? I have not been out looking around at many horns, but um, from what I hear, it's been pretty good. I mean, we've had we've had just a kind of the perfect year. It's not been too wet, um, not been too dry. Fires haven't been a big issue, so it looks good. And it sounds like you guys uh, from uh, Utah South are all super excited. So it must be really good, huh? Seems like all you guys talk about right now. Yeah, it's you know when we live in the desert and you get a little moisture, uh, it's definitely something to talk about. I think. It's going to be cool to see in the coming years, you know, what kind of growth a lot of these younger sheep put on, you know, these, these, you know, four, five, six-year-old rams, what they do. It'll be fun to kind of go back and, you know, be like, well, that's kind of the, the uh, winner of, of, you know, 19, the summer of 19, and, and uh, you know, see what kind of growth they put on. Uh, certainly, as you know, the older rams, Brendan, you know, once they get above eight years old, especially, you know, talking about Rockies and <coughs> deserts, they, they typically don't, you know, have a lot of growth, a lot of space between the, the uh, rings there. But uh, it's, it's definitely for these younger sheep, I think, going to be awesome to see probably some big gaps there where, you know, they uh, have a lot of groceries. And, you know, typically in the desert, we don't, we don't see a, a year like this, so... Yeah, I'm thinking some sheep are going to put on some some inches for sure. Um, let's see here. Want to try the Brooks Range for doll sheep? Uh, any suggestion for a guide? Um, I, I don't like to. I mean, I, I I do have some suggestions, but I, you know, again, this is one of those things where you need to call a bunch of different guys and see if they offer what you're looking for. I mean. Uh, the best outfitter, if he doesn't offer what you're looking for, whether it's a backpack on or, you know, maybe it's uh, not quite as physical or, you know, big rent. Like, it, it all depends. I mean, I I, tell, I I recommend just talking to a lot of different guys, see what they offer, and uh, and see who clicks with you. I mean, you know, some guys, some of the outfitters that I like, um, guys think are total curmudgeons, and uh, some of the guys that are super nice, their style doesn't 
fit for me. I mean, that's that's what I personally, I mean, Jonah Stewart and Henry Tiffany are a couple that just pop into my head right now that are off for great hunt, but um, there's a lot of Anwar areas up there which are uh, which are really good, and um, if, you, if you definitely want to hunt the Brooks Range, I just, I mean, I just do a Google search and, and call some guys and, and, and call some customers, some, some hunters that have been with them and find out how the, how the hunts have been and, and, uh, and see who clicks with you. I mean, not everybody's going to like everybody's style or, or what they offer. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really finding a guy that you feel the most comfortable with. Kutana Gators versus Yukon Gators. So the Katana is, uh, is it, again, our entire new Katana line and, and the Katana products are all, uh, um, you know, it's a stretch nylon-based material. It's a fabric rather than a line. And, and really we just are filling in some of the gaps. So it's a, it's a, it's a gator in between our Scree gator and the Yukon gator. We're, I mean, both those gators are, we, we feel like, are home runs. And we need one kind of in between. It's a little bit shorter. It's a little bit lighter. It's pretty easy to adjust. Um, but it's just a lighter version uh, in between the two. So, um, yeah, again, it just depends on if you don't use gators a ton. I mean, still when it's really cold late or you're doing big stream crossing and stuff like that, I would go with the Yukon. Um, it's kind of if you don't use a gator a ton but use it a bit, <clears throat> they're really durable, um, super easy to adjust. So um, really depends on the application. But it, it, it is lighter than the Yukon and, and taller and heavier than the Scree gator, to, to put it in its place. When's your next Kuyu sale? No idea. Couldn't even <laughs> couldn't even tell you. <laughs> um, it's all it's all on sale right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's all for sale. For, I guess for <laughs> sale, yeah. Um, yeah. Are the new Pro Packs compatible with the existing Icon Pro thirty two hundred frame slash setup? Yes, everything we the new all the new frame and suspension the new bag bags and the new suspension are compatible with. If you have an Icon Pro thirty two hundred, the suspension and shoulder straps will will pop right on there. Like I said, it takes very little time. Um, totally compatible with everything. Your bag, if you wanted to upgrade your suspension but keep your thirty two hundred bag and frame, that's no problem. Uh, we've made it all compatible. So everything, um, if you if you you know, have a 7200 Icon Pro, want to put the new suspension on because you want to try the new waist belt, um, and you want to upgrade to the Apex strap, it's all interchangeable. Yep. Um, that has been the, the total focus on what we feel is by far the best modular pack system ever built, and uh, that's that's one of the keys to it is you can, you can pick and choose what you want. Have boots with stiff insoles. My feet get sore halfway through the day. Insole recommendations. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, I use super feet. I have really flat feet, um, and I feel like when it comes to really stiff boots, which which I like, I, I, it took me a little while. I, I think you break your feet and your gait into a stiffer boot. Um, and, but when you're in the mountains, you will definitely see. Um, like when I, I'm, I'm going to take speculate on this one here, but his feet get sore halfway through the day. It's probably on flat ground. Um, Whereas if you're move, you know, a lot of incline, a lot of decline, um, I find that my feet don't get sore um, because of a stiff boot. You know, it allows you to, to actually lean on that that midsole and the shank to uh, to carry some of your weight. So um, a lot of it's just breaking your feet into it and making sure your boot fits well. Um, yeah, like I said, I use super feet. Um, been happy with those. I like them because I can pull them out, dry them out every night. They they don't hold like when it comes to insoles. I guess this is a an insole question, just want something that doesn't absorb a lot of water. Do you pack extra insoles for your boots on a sheep hunt? I do not. I use the, you know, again, super feet or <clears throat> whatever fits your feet the best. My, I have really flat feet, but, uh, yeah, you just want to make sure it's not something that's going to absorb water um, so you can dry them out. Um, yep. Top two recommended rifle calibers for grizzly brown bear hunting. Grizzly flash um, bomber, I mean, sir. Yeah, I'm not a super expert on that. I mean, I've, I've actually killed more with a bow than than, than a rifle, but uh, I know that, like for example, Lance's favorite is uh, is a three, for clients is a 300 Ultra Mag. A lot of guys like the 300 Ultra Mag. It's a big bullet. Um, you can make a 400 yard shot if you have to. Uh, once something, once you've hit something, or or but they're 
it, it's not so big. I know a lot of guys show up with like 375s and great big guns like that, and they're, and they're scared to death of them. I mean, something that you shoot well that shoots a 220-grain bullet, I mean, they're a big animal, and they can, they can cover a lot of country when, when they're hurt. So um, 300 Ultra Mag or 338 or something like that, again, something that you just shoot well. Mountain Star two-person tent for second week of September doll sheep hunt in Northwest Territories. <clears throat> so Mountain Star two-piece. So that's our three-season tent. I would say no. I would go with the Storm Star. Um, it would depend on the weather and the scenario. And the way the reason I say that is, you know, if it's a unsupported backpack hunt, and you're going in in the second week of September. It can be full-on winter in the NWT that time of year, um, and you know that a four season tent basically sucks tight to the ground and what you're what, what you're trying to prevent is is high wind taking your tent away a three season tent you know will hold up to a certain amount and it's lighter but in in those kind of conditions especially if you were uh, unsupported i would say i would take a four season tent i've seen you know alaska in, in late in early mid september and late september i've seen 80 mile an hour winds and you know, a three-season tent is designed to sit up above the ground. It's got more ventilation. Um, it is exactly what it is. It's not milled for winter. So I would say that's you're headed into the fourth season. Obviously, you, if you watch the weather, it looks like it's going to be great, no problem. But if you don't really know, I'd lean towards a, a true four-season tent. Recommended outfitters for first-time doll sheep hunter willing to backpack hunt. Yeah, like we went over early, um, the secret is calling a bunch of them, seeing which outfitter can deliver what you want and expect. Um, I've hunted all over. I have never hunted with a bad outfitter for sheep. Um, you just you want to know what you're going into, um, and, and you want to make sure that the, the, the outfitter that you hunt with, I keep saying guy, and I'm going to hunt with uh, Glenda Grote at Canal. Um, she's going to probably punch me when I get out there if she heard this. Um, uh <laughs> So, yeah, you just want to, the secret is just really calling a bunch of them and finding out who you're most comfortable with and, and making sure they deliver, you know, if you really want a traditional horseback hunt, um, you, you know, and you and you go to a guy that's got a, a, a super cup drop-off and a backpack hunt, you probably won't be what you think it's going to be. Or um, if you, you know, it, it, again, just there's a lot of really good doll sheep out, outfitters out there. I don't want to lean one way or the other. It's almost, you know, it's it's so cost prohibitive to get into that, um, space that there's almost no bad outfitters in, in sheep hunting. So, you know, I've hunted Alaska Range, um, Chugach, NWT, Yukon, BC. Like, um, yeah, you just want to call somebody to make sure you're you're comfortable with what they deliver. And, and you have realistic expectations. I think a lot of times when people go on a sheep hunt and they come back and it's not what they thought it was going to be is that they didn't have realistic expectations, um, you know, they, they can't work miracles. I mean, they, you know, there's some things that have to happen for you, and that's the beauty of it is that um, it's not a guarantee. Yeah, and I think, too, don't you agree, Brennan? Talk to other people that have been certain places. Uh, talk to as many people as you can and get their experiences. And, uh, you know, what may be great for someone else is not great for you. So just because, you know, someone says, oh, I had a phenomenal hunt, and then you start digging into the details, and you're like, well, that's not what I'm looking for. So, I mean, not only talk to the outfitters, but talk to people that have also gone and get their, you know, get the their personal thoughts and what have you. Talk to as many people as you can. It's always a good idea. Yeah, and, and really just don't take advice from somebody that hasn't done it. I mean, there's a lot of conceptual advice out there of people like, oh, you should do this or you should do that, and just, just talk to somebody that's actually done it because, I mean, you know, last year, your first two sheep hunts, I, I guarantee your knowledge before you went on those two versus afterwards is 10x. And it's just like, oh, yeah. it just changes it to have gone there, to, to have went through the motion, to have packed up, to actually have killed a ram, to have spent the time, you know, like it just changes. It's, you, you know, you, you can't skip that step. Um, to be an expert at sheep hunting, and, and you, the caveat would be there's guides that have not taken sheep that know as much as anybody on the planet, but... Other than that, like, just definitely get your advice from somebody that's done it. For sure. Uh, next question, what's the best clothing setup for an early, let's see, for an Arizona early coos deer hunt, which you have All a ton you. of experience with, <laughs> Brendan? <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you that the Tiburon pant is going to be awesome from a standpoint of uh, breathability, lightweight, 
You know, it's got the vents, it's got the dot air technology, so it's going to be the, the one that's going to probably be the coolest and most comfortable. Um, but, you know, you could run into a durability issue, so you might want to look at the Kutana pant. Um, the new Kutana pant is, in my mind, going to be an awesome pant for coos deer hunters. I think it would also be really good pant for all around, you know, like early season mule deer hunts, um, you know, stuff where you need lightweight, but you also need durability. Um, and then I am a big fan of the 145. I like Merino next to skin, but you could go with a 118 Peloton, which is a synthetic next to your skin, or you could go with a, uh, a 145 Zip T Merino, which is what I've always liked. Now that Kuyu's come out with this um, 145 hoodie, I'm probably going to be running the hoodie, especially on those early coos deer hunts, uh, you know, you can pop the hood up, and it's great sun protection. Um, it's great, uh, you know, bugs. You get a lot of bugs on those early October hunts, so you might look at that. Uh, and then, you know, when you're talking about taking an insulation piece on those early coos deer hunts, I mean, really, uh, it's usually very, very warm. Um, so, you know, I would maybe go with like a Peloton 240, uh, something like that, and then I would always have my rain gear, you know, as my outer shell. Um, so I'd probably go, uh, as a coos deer hunter, go with the Kutana rain pant. Um, that's going to be the most durable, uh, and the Kutana rain jacket. Um, uh, Brendan, anything there that you, uh, you know, think that, that I should add to that? No, I mean, um, the only thing that I add in on, on just on a lot of hunts is the, is the Kenai. I, I tend to take that just about everywhere, but no, that's a, that's a great system. And I'm the same way with the Merino. Like, some people like synthetics. Some like Merino. I'm the 125 Merino is my uh, my favorite piece next to skin, so. Yeah. Um, all right. What's the most challenging sheep to hunt with a bow? That's a good question. Um, statistically, it would be the stone sheep. Um, th there's, you know, just very few opportunities, very expensive. Um, most people that have hunted stone sheep have had to do it multiple times. Um, it was actually, I would call it, I like I'm, uh, I was in a great spot and got one really solid stock and killed a big stone ram with my bow, so that wouldn't, that wouldn't be my case. Um, bighorn seems to be the toughest to get an opportunity right now. I mean, bighorns are generally not that tough to kill with a bow, especially just because of limited hunting pressure and, and, and how hard those tags are to draw, but they're probably the toughest opportunity here right now. There's the least amount of um, opportunity to purchase a hunt. Um, you know, stone sheep, you can just book a stone sheep hunt, you know, like it, don't like it. Um, that's how you got to go stone sheep hunt. When it comes to bighorn, <clears throat> drawing a tag is really tough, and archery opportunities are, are pretty few and far between, whether it's Canmore some of the stuff like that, and then uh, I personally have struggled with, as I said, with doll sheep the most. I mean, I've, um, you know, bighorns, uh, got about 25 days on bighorn, got one, and, uh, uh, you know, good stone sheep with my bow, but uh, I've, I've had not a ton of luck with doll, and that's why I'm going again, but, uh, yeah, I would say statistically the most challenging for numerous reasons would be the stone sheep. Okay. Um, making the switch from Sitka, any recommendations on sizing and setup for Northern California? Well, I'd say uh, w welcome. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, if you live in Northern California, um, tons of recommendations, but I would say drive to Dixon, um, get yourself measured up at the, at the main showroom, and um, if you call ahead of time, or we can get somebody to help you out with everything. We have an uh, incredible showroom there in in Northern California, um, full, we have every single piece that we make and um, some great people there that can um, get everything fitted up for you and get your full system put together. So, um, yeah, for your North Cal, I would uh, I would take the time. We have people fly in really weekly to get sized up. I mean, as far as, you know, we've had a guy fly over from Europe before to get sized up. So, um, and just see the whole system and check out the showroom and, and get set up. So, um, yeah, Northern Cal, would say stop by and do it. If not, um, our sizing is very simple. You just have to measure yourself. <clears throat> Most of the time you run into problems with people just, just haven't actually measured themselves. If you 
if you were a medium in high school and, um, and you put on 25 pounds, then you're probably not still a medium, and we run into that a bit, and just like myself, I mean, I'm a little bigger than I used to be, so um, just putting a tape on yourself, and, um, and yeah, I mean, as far as the system goes, you want to, you know, just a good base layer, mid layer, soft shell, rain gear, pants, you know, the full system, you, you need it all, but um, yeah, if you're in Northern California, come by the main, the main headquarters. Uh, you answered this, but any personal sheep uh, hunts for Brendan this year? Yep, to NWT, Canal, and uh, and Ultimate Thule in Alaska. So, yep, going to be uh, okay. Yep. Uh, can only have one Peloton ninety seven or Merino one forty five Eastern Montana mid archery through rifle season. Um, well, the Merino one forty five would be, I'm assuming hoodie would be kind of more of a base layer, and the Peloton 97 is more of a mid-layer, so I get, I mean, I don't know why you could only have just one. We we make both and sell both, so I'd love to have you have both, but uh, I would say if I if you had to pick one, I don't know, the, the oh, geez, I, I'm using both of those a lot. Um, uh, 145 hoodie is a great option. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Um, I would also say, though, the Peloton 97, although it is the lightest of the mid-layers, I mean, I have worn it as a base layer, and it is soft, and it does feel good next to skin. It's not one yep. that I would just go out and, and wear, but um, I had that 97 on the NWT, and there was times when I just put that on next to skin, and I was actually very, very surprised of, of how comfortable it was. Yeah, I'll wear a Nexus skin sometimes, especially later, too. But, it, you know, when he's talking eastern Montana mid-archery, you're, you're probably talking yeah. really hot weather. And I would uh, say yeah. a Merino base layer is going to be probably more more ideal for you. Yeah. Um, are you still working on a tripod and tripod head? Yeah. Yeah, we're working on a really cool project that Jason Harrison has started with uh, with a company called 2A Armament in Boise. And uh, no idea on the timing when it's going to be done. We're... we're really just looking to see if we can solve a bunch of the problems with tripods that we've always carried in heads and, and um, yeah it's been a really fun project to to work on and um, I guess just stay updated um, I'll, I'll update everybody as soon as we get um, more testing I'm actually taking one on this hunt and um, just making sure it's it's a real true development process of until it's perfect it's not ready I mean that's kind of how Everything is with Kuyu, right? I mean, you're you're constantly getting better, and and you have to put out new gear, and you can always make it better. But you guys are pretty picky on what you put out. Yeah, I don't really put a time frame on something to be to be perfect. And and conversely, if we get something right instantly, it's we we can react really quickly. And and there's been some people like, oh, we have three year testing or whatever. It's like, well, if you don't. If you don't go on any sheep hunts and you don't use it that much, like you could have ten year testing, it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, what it boils down to is use. Um, how much has it been used, and how much has it been used in the situation that our customer is going to be going to be using on? I mean, you take one thing on three different sheep hunts, um, you're going to know how it performs. Versus, you know, if you've got something sitting in your closet for three years, it doesn't really mean anything. So, um, yeah, just however long it's going to take. Um, that's that's how long it'll take, but it's uh, it's a cool project, I, and I'm confident uh, as Jason got it started and we finish this thing up, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Brittany, you bring up something there that I'd like to point out. I know Jason used to talk about it, um, and and I see it every day. But there's a huge difference in you know Kuyu, you know Jason, yourself. You guys were building gear for your hunts that you were going on and you were looking, you know, where you could fill needs, where you could fill a niche of something that, you know, was necessary and going on these hunts year after year after year um, plays a huge important role in getting it right, does it not? It does. It's it's, <clears throat> And we have a whole team of guys that, that are that are doing this yearly, and um, it's not just me. It wasn't just Jason, but it's it's uh, yeah, it's really using it in the situation, the worst situation that our customer could possibly use it in. Um, yeah, I mean, testing stuff in situations that are similar is not good enough. Um, if you're not 
actually going on these things and doing it, and um, you, you don't really have the experience. And but we, like I said, I call it conceptual knowledge. You can you can take a rain jacket on a ski hill and say it performed great, but until you take it on a ten day sheep hunt, you don't really know how it performs. Um, so you know, again, it's just where's where's it been used, and and you know, uh, the more you do it, the, the the more scenarios you see, the more, you know, we don't get everything perfect every time, but we do a pretty damn good job of making sure that everything is uh, is tested in the right places with their, in the conditions that you're going to face. For sure. Uh, let's see. With the best Instagram handle out there, which I might add is the, the Ram Hustle, at the Ram Hustle on Instagram, why no present activity? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, it's one of those things where uh, it just boils down to time. You know, I'm 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 really busy with the job. I'm I'm busy hunting. I got I have two little kids, and I'm you know trying to be a good dad and a good husband. And uh, it just seems like that that's kind of a time suck at this point in time. If I ever, if I have to at some point in time, maybe I will. But um, I'm I don't have enough time as it is. Um, so, and uh, it'd probably be uh, far far more boring than people would. Would, would think, but uh, yeah, I, I like uh, actually communicating on there a little bit. Um, and, and we, you know, the only reason I actually got an Instagram account was because we, nobody sends in pictures anymore. They just send you links, and if you don't have an Instagram account, you can't look at them. So, uh, but yeah, it really just boils down to time, you know. And, and uh, I just, you know, I want to. I can see now the first that picture important. that you post is going to be you with a big trophy turkey. Could be, could be the turkey <laughs> shot. That would be, that would be, uh, yeah, that would be pretty funny. But. Uh, okay, question here: How did your grizzly hunt go? You answered that. Um, how do you know if a if a pack fits you correctly? Um, <clears throat> so you, if your pack fits you correctly, it should it should feel like an extension of your body. Um, it should carry well. You should not have to adjust it all the time. You shouldn't be moving stuff around. I mean, you know, there's a lot of different things. You know, you're, there's all kinds of rules of thumb on how to fit a pack correctly, but it, a lot of it is based on your body, which is, you know, some of the reasons we went into the new development and came out with the new suspension and, um, and bags is um, it's, it's different people's body carry weight differently. Um, some guys, you know, some people have, you know, a big butt. Some have none. Some have a long torso. Like I personally have a longer torso than than most people that are five ten. Some people have short torso. Like um, one of the things you could do is just is, is have somebody that that knows what they're doing adjust it for you or get it to where you know your load lifter should be at a, as a rule of thumb a forty five degree angle when you're carrying weight. Um, yeah, I mean it should it should fit well. It should not feel like it's uh, it should not be painful. It should not feel like you need to adjust it all the time. You should slide right into it and. Um, and, and it, should, it should fit well. I mean, that seems like a simple explanation, but um, that's a correctly fitted pack should feel like an extension of you. Brendan, do you feel like mistakes guys make, um, they don't tighten their weight, weight, uh, waist belt as much as they should and they have too much weight bearing on their shoulders? Um, or are there any other mistakes out there that, you know, you see and you help guys correct that? I think a lot of times um, people don't take their pack. Um, you need to go through a, a, a progression every time of, you know, undoing your waist belt, taking your chest strap off, loosening your shoulder straps, taking the, like, I think a lot of guys climb into, or people climb into their pack, um, suck tight, and it's like trying to get into your boot without, uh, you know, I mean, every time you get in your boot, you have to unlace it, slide it in, tighten it up, make sure it fits right. You should take the same steps with a pack as well. Yeah, and a lot of times... Um, and it depends on how much weight you're carrying. Um, and I think there's kind of a misconception that um, load lifters or a pack is going to make 110 pounds feel better. I mean, 110 pounds or 80 pounds or 60 pounds in a pack, um, it, you're going to notice it's there. I mean, when you're down to yeah. 20 or 30, it's. I mean, it, it's. there's no pack that's going to make it feel like it doesn't exist. Um, it's not going to carry you. So I think part of the thing is some, sometimes there's expectations where, you know, a load. You know, you're carrying that weight. Um, it's it's you're going to notice it. So it's it's how can you be the most comfortable by carrying a significant amount of weight, especially you know when you're packing out meat or something. So, 
What's your backpack training routine to prepare for your upcoming doll sheep hunt? Um, just hiking with weight. Um, I, I try and break a sweat every day. I run a couple times a week. Um, right now, this one I'm focused mostly on shooting. I, I spend more time shooting my bow than I have probably working out. Um, I try and stay in good shape year-round. But you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to sheep hunting, or, or not really even sheep hunting, as far as backpacking, and um, it's really being mentally tough. Um, putting yourself in, you, you understand that you're going to face some adversity, you're going to get tired, you're going to get hungry, um, weight is going to feel heavy on your back, um, you're going to face rain, you're going to, like, it, it's not going to be fun the whole time. I think just being mentally tough um, is, is one of the best things you can do, and being prepared that you're not, you don't know how everything's going to going to affect you, and, and you're going to roll with it as it goes. Um, but, yeah, as far as working out, um, the, the more you can do something that's close to what you're doing, whether it's hiking with weight, um, I don't, like I said, I don't run a ton. and I'm, I'm 41 now. I'm trying to run less and less. I try and just keep in good shape, and a lot of it is, you know, eating right, keeping a good diet, trying to keep your weight down um, to, a, to a reasonable level, especially through the winter. It gets tougher and tougher, so... Um, any good training, I, I think any good training thing that's not going to get you hurt. Um, you know, I'm not a big CrossFitter because it seems like um, a lot of guys do get get really into a heavy workout program using weights and stuff. And if you can handle that, that's great. But you also don't want to be injured. Um, nothing worse than going in with a bad knee or you know something like that. So just um, you know, again, it's like anything. It's your your body will let you know what uh, what it's going to take, but getting far enough ahead of it and just putting a goal towards it. Brendan, when you and Jason would do a lot of these hunts together, um, talk a little bit about uh, hunts with him and, you know, his mental strength, your mental strength as far as in the, in the grind of a hunt. What was it like with him? Oh, it was fun. I mean, yeah, the, this is the first sheep hunt I'm going on, you know, you know yeah, it's, it's it, it was fun. It, it's fun to hunt with people, not just Jason, or like it's fun to hunt with people, with guys that are. Yeah, I keep saying guys, but it's fun to hunt with people that you know you're down. You're you're going to be there no matter what. Like it, the harder it got, the crappier the weather. It was more, it, it almost got funny. You know, where you're just like, can you believe this? Like, I mean, we used to all the time just be like, what do regular people do for fun? <laughs> you know, that, that was what you say. Like, what what do normal, what do normal guys do for fun? Um, the the grind, the tough parts of it. That that's what makes it the most rewarding. I mean, you don't know the sweet without the bitter. I mean, you have to eat. You know, if you only ate candy, you, you're not going to know how good candy is. I mean, you got to eat some, you know, yeah. some broccoli here every now and again, or some stuff that doesn't taste as good to, to really know how sweet it is. And that's what sheep. I'm like you. The harder the hunt is the more you're going to remember it. And the easier the hunt is, the, the, the less you're going to remember it. So the, the, the really tough hunts were just, it was just fun. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, every, you hear a lot of like, oh, that guy could go anywhere. You could do anything. Or you'd be, I mean, when you're with guys, in, you know, Paul Bride's the same way and, you know, Lance is the same way. Johnny Ray Dean and I've hunted with, like, guys that you know, like, it doesn't matter how tough it is. They're not going to quit. You're just going to go. And it may be slow. It may be crappy weather like that's the fun start that's why you, that's why you do it um because not everybody can handle that um so that's 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 one of the things i looked forward mostly to and, and really looking forward to on, on these times as well and yeah just th there are those experiences too where you don't get to do it a lot of times in your life and you, and you remember them more so i mean even if you know even even to do something a hundred times if you got to be that lucky it's still not that many compared to you know commuting to work or whatever it is you do a lot of it's uh yeah they're they're uh well you know i mean you've been on a couple now like it's just something that is, it's just different it's it's just something you know not something everybody's going to get to do a lot of but if you do get a chance it's worth it's worth putting a plan together and going and doing don't you think there's some misconception too that you know guys like yourself guys like jason like you guys just go, 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 there's no pain, there's no, you know, suffering. I mean, that's all there. What you're talking about is that next level of 
just embracing what's going on, grinning and laughing about it, ribbing your buddy and just keep plowing away, right? That's not saying that, you know, you, you didn't fall and almost cut your finger off. You didn't, you know, experience, you know, cramps and all sorts of issues that, you know, legs, you know, not wanting to go. I mean, you guys, you and Jason experienced that, but it was more of the, the camaraderie of we're going to get through this. Can you believe that, you know, it's, it's hailing on us right now at this current time and kind of a, a just enjoying it, right? Just mentally being prepared for whatever comes your way, it, embracing the pain and just going, going forward. Yeah, it's not fun the whole time, and, and you know, you, you build those type of relationships, and, and you truly know who somebody is when you go through, you know, adversity, and yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it's something you can't explain to people, and you just have to go do it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's one of those things where, and you forge friendships that they're unbreakable. You just, you know that, you know, if you somebody can, can go them. through that with you, you can go through, you can do just about anything, and, and you, you know, yeah. Personal opinion on going archery grizzly bear hunting, would it be fun or too dangerous? Obviously, they didn't know you did it, but what's your answer? <laughs> uh, if, you, if, if you want to get talked out of uh, basically doing any hunting, um, you're probably the wrong guy to talk to. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's something that needs to be taken seriously. I will, I will say, um, yeah, bow hunting grizzly bears – and brown bears is an incredible experience. I'm glad that I've done it. I'm going to do it again. It's deadly serious, and you have to want to bow hunt a, 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 a grizzly bear or a brown bear and not just have taken a brown bear or a grizzly bear with a bow, and there's a difference in that. Like, you have to want to do it. Um, I think those kind of things with a rifle is probably more fun. It's it's a true challenge. There is definitely some danger involved. It's, it's not to be exaggerated with, and and this is one of those things where you want to get some advice from somebody that's done it, especially like on bow setups and all that kind of stuff where, um, man, there is a lot of bad advice out there on what you should take and, you know, how you should react and all that kind of, like, make sure you're, you're, you're looking at a setup and, and going with somebody that's, um, that's done it um, for sure because, you know, it's, it can be, I have a good friend that got mauled this summer. It was uh, just a bad deal and, and, um, it can be it can be a serious thing, and then you know when it comes to bow hunting bears, like you you need to you need to make sure you got the right setup for sure. I was we, we were leaving the last hunt. I was in the airport, and there was a guy there that had a grizzly setup that a guy that had never been grizzly hunting told him he should take, and he had like a 900 grain arrow going 205 feet a second with a single pin slider, and I was like, man, this this is like a disaster waiting to happen, and um, so. You just want to make sure you um, talk to somebody that's done it when you're getting your setup ready. And again, it's something that you don't need to do it. It's uh, it, it's 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 an unbelievable experience. Yeah, you talk about you know talking to people that have done it. It's like, do you take financial advice from someone that you know doesn't own anything or you know doesn't have a net worth? No, I mean you've no. got to seek out good advice from people that are experienced and that, you know, live it and breathe it and do it all the time. And it's, you know, it's, it's just common sense, I think. Uh, yep. Best pack best pack haulers, Mystery Ranch, Kuyu, or Stone Glacier? I'm going to be pretty biased on that one, but I would uh, definitely ours. And, um, and, and like I said, our modular system just allows you to, uh, to take the perfect pack every time, including load hauler. Um, yeah, I mean, managing weight, and I, I think any pack nowadays you can put more weight than you can handle in it. It's uh, making sure it gets fitted to you, and and, uh, and and really making sure that you you know how to how to use your pack. So I mean, I think just about any pack will handle all the weight you can get it. I know most packs will carry more than I can put in them. I know ours certainly will. So um, yeah, I'm in my low twenties. And I would love to hunt doll sheep in my 30s. Will hunt costs keep rising? The, yes, they will certainly keep rising. No doubt about that. I mean, uh, there's just not enough to go around. Supply and demand. Uh, there's far more demand than there is supply, so they will go up in, in price. Now, how fast? The last 20 years has went up pretty fast. 
um, close to more than doubled. And I assume you know talking about dolls. I mean, they went from I did my I think in 2008 the average doll sheep hunt was around 8,000 to 10,000 bucks, and they're around 20 to 25 now, or 18 to 25. So they're going to keep going up. Uh, and like I said, it's supply and demand. Um, that's I, I, you just got to put a plan in place, whether it's you know three grand a year or how you know look far enough out. And like I said, I I, I like I I personally like I think people would think all my hunts are paid for or something, which is not the case. Um, I have personally made, put a plan together that I book a hunt every three years. That's my personal sheep hunt. That's when I can all of my personal sheep hunt. Um, so I, I put a plan in place and a little bit of pressure to come up with the money or or to to do a little extra work or to guide a little bit extra to put some more money in your pocket to uh, to pay for that. Um, I think it's good. And you like I said, you won't know the don't know the sweet without the bitter. <clears throat> the harder it is, the more you'll appreciate it. Like if doll sheep were cheap um, and you could go on one every year, it wouldn't be as special as it is. Um, it's a truly an opportunity that you just don't get to do a lot. So um, I would say lean into that. And, and uh, yeah, if you're in your 20s, going to your 30s, I would uh, yeah put a, put a financial plan together. I mean, unfortunately, right now when you look at the statistics of drawing a sheep tag and you're in your 20s without points, um, you're far better off if you absolutely want to bank. You want to know that you're going to be able to hunt sheep to. Um, focus on on booking a sheep hunt than trying to draw because um, I mean there's the, the statistics. You know, obviously there's an unlimited area in Montana which you can come hunt any year, but the statistics would say you're going to go a while without um, without being able to hunt. So I would uh, plan for what you can guarantee and react to what um, if you get lucky. I mean I I'd apply for everything, and if you get lucky, good for you. But uh, in the meantime, I'd plan for certainty. Any chance that the long sleeve logos shirts coming out? It's been years. That's an interesting question. I I don't know the answer to that. Um, I'll look into it. But yeah, that's a good question. I, was, I don't wear a lot of long sleeve shirts, but uh, we got a bunch of new T-shirts in right now. But yeah, that that is. A, I guess I didn't think of that. Yeah, we haven't had a long sleeve shirt. I'll have to look into it. Bigger hat sizes, especially in the boonie. Not one of the hat. Not one of the hats fits me or some of my friends. I, boy, that's a, I, uh, yeah. I'm, obviously, anybody who's ever seen a photo of me and knows I don't wear a hat very often, so I'm probably like the worst guy <laughs> ever to uh, to make a decision on hats. But uh, um, yeah, I don't. I don't know about that one. We'll have to. Uh, I'll have to take a look at that or ask somebody. Um, I know our hats fit people because uh, I see a lot of them, but. Um, as far as bigger hat size, I don't, I don't know if there's anything in the, in the works. And um, I'm a medium in the booing, so I, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. Have them shoot me an email. I'll uh, even if we can't get one, I'll get. I'll, we'll find one that'll fit them. Must have a big head. While we're on hats, I want you guys to design a mega boonie, one like the big wide brim, you know, like that I can wear fishing. Like one of those gardening hats. <laughs> 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 oh, that cracks Burns, you crack me up. What was the thing when you came down um Cooster hunting with me and um I had some belt on and I just grabbed a belt and threw it on and you said, Does that come what'd you say? Does that come in men's oh, size that, too? That, yeah, <laughs> that, do they make that belt in men's? Yeah, you had one of those like early nineties braided leather belts where I I hadn't seen one since about I think I remember seeing them run long and tucked into itself in about '92. Um, in a, in a Bill Bibb uh, Bo uh, music I'll video, but it's like, yeah, that. that was the old school. That was the old school belt. Yeah, it was Paul Bride, Jason, and you. And you're like, do they have that in men's? Do they make that in men's too? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you're a legend, Burns. You're gonna have to, uh, you know, to break. You're gonna have to break that belt out again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a teacher from Washington headed for Yukon sheep in August. What new Kuyu items are must-haves? Yeah, I, boy, that's a that's a kind of a loaded that's question. A long but list. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the new hybrid stuff is really, really. Um, 
really has some some great uses. It, uh, again, like the um, the 260, the new hybrid 260 is a really cool piece. Um, the 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 hybrid 3D effects um, katana jacket is. I'm I'm going to take that on this next hunt. Um, yeah, it just depends on what you've got right now, but um, it's all on there. It's all on the site right now, and all the new releases have videos for it. Just kind of filling in. Um, yeah, as far as must-haves, you need it all. Brendan, when you <laughs> when you talk about these hybrids, that something need to be I need to add there. Um, when you talk about hybrids, you're talking about portions of the the uh, garment, if you will, on the tops. Uh, that are going to be different than, say, under the arms. In other words, yeah, there's, there are fabrics. places, so, yeah, two different fabrics within one piece creating a hybrid situation where you can get the best of both worlds. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so like, for example, like on the talus pant, you know, like it's got a, uh, it's got a fleece back uh, soft shell with the, and, and then at the, at the top it's got where you need to stretch it's got the uh, you know the attack pant fabric, so you, you get the best of both worlds. You get a super water resistant, waterproof lower l lower leg and butt with a with the stretch of um, of a of a of a stretch woven. So it's it's really just picking the fabric. Sort of like when you're carrying a backpack with the hybrid 260 or the 3D FX, is you're you're insulated where you where you would be exposed, and you're highly breathable in your underarm and in your back where you carry a pack, and it's just just really focusing on making it. It's, it's more of a custom, because not every fabric is good everywhere. So it's just, it, it makes it more custom and, and more, uh, sometimes more fitted, but also uh, more specific. Does Kuyu, let's see, the question is, does Kuyu have any plans for a warm weather hybrid pant like Tiburon slash Chugach combo? Must must mean katana. I would That's what I that. thought. Yeah, yeah. That's um, what I thought. Yeah. Uh, it not, says not, a, not right combo, now. But I, I, yeah. Yeah, not not as of right now. Um, the hybrid stuff we go into when you, when you really need something like uh, and and that potentially could be some down the road. But the the Tiburon is very specific. I mean, when you're talking a hundred plus warm degree, weather. I mean, when you're talking crazy yeah. warm weather, um, it, it's going to be pretty hard to 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 top that, and then that's why we came out with the, the katana is a more durable early season, um, you know, focus more on durability. Um, so as of right now, no, I, that, that would, it's an intriguing thing, and we'll probably mess around with it, but uh, I can't see a true need for that as of right now. What do you think of the Valkyrie archery system? So I've killed... Um, the the two big bears I shot with the with with Brett system and it's uh, yeah it's a it's a a really good system I've uh, I've had great performance with it I've shot uh, elk and that's that's what I'm using for elk and big bears um, and I, I've been very happy with it um, the thing with uh, you know there's there's kind of a debate lately with you know front of center and speed versus weight and all that um, I I found like for myself with an archery setup. I need enough speed to where I don't have a crazy pin gap. I need enough weight and enough front of center to where I've got the kinetic energy to kill whatever size animal that I'm hunting, whether it's elk or, or brown bear. And there's a there's a fine line in the middle there. Like for, I found it's around 500 grains for me. And again, all these things come into play with how long is your draw length. You know, if if your draw length is longer than me, I have a 27 and three quarter inch draw length. So um, kind of diving into the technical stuff, but like for me, for, for brown bears, grizzly bears, and elk, I'm shooting 500 grains at 280 feet a second. Um, I feel like I can make a shot on guest yardage if I need to, and you know, with some of that stuff like big bears, it'd be great if you could say it's going to be a 20-yard shot and you're going to pound right through them, but in reality, it could be 45 yards and you could be walking. I mean, I just shot the last one at 22 yards walking, and the reason I needed to shoot them walking is because I didn't want to, you know, you're not going to whistle at a big predator to let him know where you're at to stop him. Um, and so, you know, yeah. But I've, I've been really happy with that system. Killed those uh, those two great big bears with it. And, yeah, it's been a really good system. All right. Where and who is the best value doll sheep hunt available with a great chance of success? 
again, that's that's one of those that you're just going to want to talk to a lot. It, it's definitely going to be in Alaska. Um, a couple things about Alaska: the, the travel to Alaska is a lot less expensive. You can get to Anchorage in one day, you know, in one day fairly cheaply. Um, for, yeah, uh, it's not a, it's not as expensive as travel. I mean, the travel to NWT and the Yukon can be extremely expensive. Um, so I would definitely say with Dolce, but it's going to be in Alaska, and you know, Alaska Range, Brooks Range. Um, you know, some of the best value are some of that draw tags in the in the Chugach, if you can get it. So I mean, that that's where I'd look. Lots of really good outfitters in the Alaska Range and the and the Brooks Range, and uh, yeah, that's that's going to be price wise and um, great chance of success. There's there's a lot of really good outfitters that that go 100% every year. Brendan, that uh, concludes the questions that we got from the Kuyu customers. Um, it's always great having you on the podcast. Uh, look forward to seeing the great photos of your trip coming up here, your two dull sheep hunts coming up, and it's always great having you on. I uh, want to give you a chance. Uh, any last-minute thoughts, uh, anything you need to get out to the Kuyu customers, uh, give you the pour for that. And, uh, yeah, just can't wait to see the success that you have and, and hear the stories and the adventure. So uh, keep doing what you're doing and and uh, let you uh, have any final thoughts here. No, I appreciate you having, having me on, Jay. And, uh, yeah, this has gotten, I think we've gotten a little better at this. It's, it's been pretty fun. Um, and like I said, the last time, if you have a specific question, shoot it into service at Kuyu.com. We will get that question answered, any product questions, anything. We have some really, really um, cool new products coming out in the next three weeks and five weeks. We got some really cool stuff coming out this summer that I'm, I'm really excited for everybody to see. And uh, yeah, just looking forward to unplugging here for a little while. But yeah, I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to answer these questions. And, and yeah, anybody has anything specific, shoot it over. Um, anybody wants that gear list, shoot it over to service at and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get you helped out for sure. Yep, and uh, for the listeners out there, I will uh, put uh, the links that Brendan mentioned here so that you can easily uh, click on them and uh, get all your questions answered. Uh, feel free. Uh, also, you can always send me questions, and I'll kind of keep track of them uh, for the next uh, Kuyu Q&A uh, with Brendan Burns. So, uh, Brendan, uh, knock them dead. Uh, can't wait to uh, hear the stories when you get back. Uh, travel safe, and uh, we'll see you See you here, uh, hear from me here in a couple weeks. All right, Jay. Talk to you soon. All right. All right, buddy. God bless. Bye. Bye.